In this first episode of my Gato Engine water shader tutorial series, we're making a basic plane based water shader. This video covers the basic setup, wave imitation using normal maps, and Fresnel shading. As always, you can grab the source files for this and all my Gato tutorials on my Patreon. Our water material will use a single plane setup, meaning we're just using a simple plane mesh. For my environment setup, I created a little test pool. You can grab this initial project setup on my Patreon for free and start creating the water material from there. First, we select the water plane mesh node and create a new shader material. Save this resource as water in a materials folder, and then in the shader field, create a new shader. We're going to use the script editor and code everything directly. I might do a visual shader version of this in the future, but I'm not entirely sure. If you want that, let me know in the comments. In our shader, we make sure our shader type is set to spatial and create a uniform variable for our primary water color. Remember, uniforms are like export variables in that we can edit them in the inspector. Then in our fragment or pixel shader, add the albedo and set it to our primary color. We need to grab just the RGB values or you'll get an error because albedo is only a vector three and our primary color is vector four. We'll use the alpha later. Your water should now have a basic flat color that you can set in the inspector. Next, add a roughness uniform and set it to 0.2. In the fragment function, add roughness and set it to equal to our roughness uniform. This creates a glass-like look on our water surface. To simulate waves moving on the surface, we make use of two different normal maps. These will alter how light interacts with our water surface, giving the effect of waves. We create four more uniforms, two for our normal map textures, be sure to add the hint normal, and two for each normal map strength. In the inspector, our normal maps will use the built-in noise texture generator. I found that I kind of like the cellular option the best. Be sure to make the texture seamless and set as normal map to true. In the fragment shader, we add a new variable normal map and set it to equal to a texture sample of our normal map A multiplied by our normal map A strength. Then add the texture sample of normal map B multiplied by the normal map B strength. Finally, after our roughness, set the normal map to equal our normal map variable. Be sure you don't use normal because that's an entirely different setting. Our water should now have a rough wave-like texture. We can make this move by using the time built-in. First, add three more uniforms, movement direction for the direction the wave should move, the strength of the movement or how fast, and a UV scale option. In the fragment function, we set a new variable UV to equal our UV built-in multiplied by our UV scale. Then add UV movement and set it to equal to our movement direction multiplied by time and our movement strength. Back in the normal math variable, we swap UV uppercase for our new lowercase UV variable and add our UV movement in our first normal map and subtract it from our second normal map. This is gonna cause the normal maps to move in opposite directions. Finally, we'll add what is called a Fresnel effect that will change the color of the water depending on the viewing angle to the camera. We add a new function called Fresnel that will supply us with a float value. As the pixel normal becomes more perpendicular to our camera, the value will go up. In the fragment function, we set basic Fresnel to our Fresnel function and incorporate it into our albedo and roughness values like this. You should now have a basic water shader with wave movement and basic Fresnel. In the next episode, we'll add depth, so objects in the water seem to disappear as they go deeper.